So for Outdoors with Kirk on Rumble, today we're going to hike the Florida Trail. Now, to get here, you come down 441 if you want to plug it into your phone. Most of the time, if you just say Vortex, it'll bring you right to this parking area. Now, up this way is a uh, like a, a mountain biker's paradise. They got all kinds of obstacles and stuff. That, see the guy getting his bike ready, and uh, boy, as a young person, that would have been a lot of fun, but not... Not at my age now, so we're just going to do a hike. Uh, but if you want to just know directions, come down 441, take 80th Street, and then this is uh, 25th Avenue right out here, and then you just turn into the parking lot. And you can see that I'm parked down at, at the, the corner here, you know, instead of going up towards the vortex. So the actual trail goes this way. A lot of people don't know about this section of the Florida Trail, even though Everybody hikes it from the Santos area up to uh, probably just up to about right here. And then they turn around and go back and they don't get this section of the trail in. And this is actually a beautiful, beautiful piece of the Florida Trail that's very convenient to the villages. And uh, we're going to get it in today. So this is going to be, uh, it's going to be fun. It's, uh, it's a beautiful day. Good God, I had to get out. And uh, by the way, there's a, uh, just down the road here, and the reason why I come here sometimes is uh, I recycle my aluminum cans. And there's a Dollar General right down the road on 441. And right across from that is a metal recycling uh, facility. And uh, if you want to do your own recycling rather than stick them in those bins, which may or may not get recycled, uh, you even get a little bit of money for them. It's, uh, it's a pain in the butt. You just pull in there. And hand them your cans and uh, yeah you know of course I got a can crusher so you know if you're just gonna use regular cans I mean it's <laughs> you're not gonna get much money but uh, I'd say about five dollars most of the time when I go in there with a bag full of cans but uh, this is this is the trail uh, you can see what it's looking like it's uh, very well maintained and uh, this is what it looks like probably most of the way I don't remember that many transitions on this section of the trail, but we're, we're going to hike a good uh, three or four hours. Uh, we'll see how I do today. Uh, just uh, when you got this perfect of weather, you got to got to take advantage of it. But this is what the trail's looking like. And uh, look at those beautiful oak trees. Oh my God. Florida, we have, uh, I'm so glad that we preserved these areas. By the way, the growth in this area, I'm in central Florida. I mean, this is all in central Florida, and I hate to see it, man. There are so many houses, so much construction, so many people moving into the area, you know. But, but still, when I come out on these trails, for the most part, I don't usually see any people. But, well, it's, it depends on the section of the trail that you're doing. So, uh, But I wanted to get this portion of the Florida Trail in for you. I made a video years back. Oh, yeah, I forgot to give you the date. So it's February 1st. 2024 February 1st 2024 I've got to start putting that on my hiking videos so that people can get a look because what I'm what I'm seeing is hiking these trails at different times of the year can give you an entirely different hike and a different look so you know it's okay to make multiple hiking videos at different times of the year to show people what it looks like because you know some people they might not want to be out here uh, you know and like the last time I hiked the section of the Florida Trail down near uh, baseline oh my god I, I, I guess they hadn't been back in there to maintain it and uh, everything was just scraping against me and uh, you know the bike trail through that section was was well maintained <laughs> but uh, but the Florida trail it looks like they had, nobody had cut it in a while uh, I used to get out here and do maintenance and I will start doing that I'm working on my house right now and until I finish my house by the way over here I forgot to show you well, here, let's walk on over. I want to show you this real quick. Because if you've got, uh, if you want to uh, have a football game, flag football, or bring a Frisbee, or uh, even probably, I'm not sure, I imagine they would let you fly a, a drone, or, you know, remember those, uh, those little planes that you could fly around? But I want to show you this huge open field. I used to come in here and hit golf balls back when I could play golf before I broke my neck. And uh, I would just set up right here and just whack balls out there. But see, and the vortex is right down there. And it, 
It used to, well, there's a, yeah, there's an outhouse. So you do have a bathroom here too, which is good. So I forgot wanted, I'm glad I came out here to show you. And of course the parking lot's just back here. All right, so, uh, I, but I just wanted to show you this open field because they keep it cut. I don't know why they don't just let it grow in because I never see anybody in this field except for me when I was hitting golf balls. All right, let's get on the trail. I had to show you this because this is different. I've never seen them do this before, but they actually painted the roots that you might trip over. <laughs> that's, a, that's a first, man. Because I'm gonna, well, I, you know, I have tripped over them. I'm going to tell you that, and I don't didn't bring the walking stick today, but I did want to show you this transition as we come into more of a pine type of forest. We're still right next to the vortex, uh, so. But uh, the painted uh, the painted roots there that was <laughs> that was something I had I had to get that on the video. All right, all right, I got to get this on the video. Hopefully we'll get close to him. See the woodpecker on the tree? Check him out. Wonder if he's going to fly away as I get closer here. Ah, oh, there he goes. Darn it. Well, let's see if we can get him up on that tree. Yeah, he's he's hiding. See him? Pretty cool with the red head, huh? What is that called? A red-headed woodpecker? I don't know, but this is what the trail's looking like. Pretty cool. So I wanted to show you over to the right. That's a mountain bike trail. Now, I actually, uh, even with a broken neck, I came back on uh, my hybrid bike, and I didn't ride that trail. I rode a, a trail up and uh, up towards the land bridge. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a green trail. Green means easy. And uh, that's what I like about this area for mountain biking is even an old fart with a broken neck can uh, can mountain bike these trails and so I will be pulling out my mountain bike uh, right after I'm done working on my house and uh, we'll, we'll get some mountain bike rides in I can't do any of the the blue or the, uh, the, the the hard trails we might hike those just to make a video about them but we'll start getting some mountain biking in and uh, I'm sure that as I get on the get with the mountain bikers, we'll learn where more uh, mountain bike trails are. But it goes all through here. I mean, I tell you what. And of course, that we could do this. Well, I've already walked the trail, so I've already made a video about it. That section of the uh, trail from uh, uh, from Baseline to Santos. Uh, that's a nice bike ride, and uh, it's got some some up and down and some undulations. It wasn't like a nice flat trail like we're on right now. But I just wanted to point that out to you that this is just a fantastic area for mountain biking because you just have you have everything you want and even the easy trails the way they cut that one in up to uh, up to Cactus Jack you know right right in that area was uh, it was uh, it, it wound around quite a bit I mean you were doing this and so if you kind of want to go you know about 10 miles an hour if you're if you're really aggressive you could get it up and it was fun. Because you're, you're, you're constantly making those turns back and forth, even though the trail was easy. So it's uh, it made it fun. Just saying. I thought this was a pretty cool view. And I wanted to tell a quick story as we're hiking along. We're, we're way up from the vortex now. So we're just continuing. I know people out here. Uh, but uh, there's a woman in my community. And uh, she walks the whole length of the community. I mean, it's like four to probably walks about, you know, four to eight miles a day. And uh, but she walks on the asphalt because she says that the the concrete uh, sidewalk is hard on her on her knees and her legs, and uh, and so the community you know they actually went in and they put no walking on the asphalt because that's actually the cart path, uh, and so people I don't know people get a you know, old people man you got to give them something to complain about right uh, I didn't didn't care if she walked on the the asphalt but that's neither here nor there but if I were her you know. I'm sure she'll never see one of my videos, but if uh, if you do live in the villages or or Del Webb or any any of the around this area, see how the pine needles and everything. This is really really easy on your knees, uh, even jogging this, because uh, you know when you jog on asphalt or you jog on uh, uh, on the concrete, you do get those shin splints. I remember when I used to do 10 miles three times a week, you know, jogging. And man, sometimes my legs, you know, you get those shin splints and that just ends your jogging right there. But if you come out here and walk this, really easy on the legs, easy on the body. Plus you're getting all this fresh air anyway. Just saying. In case you're watching this in some other place in the country, 
There's also, not in addition to mountain bike trails, we have these equestrian trails. So you can see the horses have been through here and it goes all around, all back and forth through here. You could ride all day and not cover all these trails. Pretty cool. I just, just love it here. Hey, there goes another bird. Check him out. Good time to cut the video on. God, I couldn't tell what he was. Big though. I should know what road this is. Could be the one tenth. Anyway, we're crossing this road and you see the the sign here and I guess a guy's parked here. Do not block the gate. <laughs> I guess he's, he figures he's not blocking the gate. That's a big truck, isn't it? So, uh, so here we actually, the, uh, the Florida Trail and of course you got Spider South mountain biking. And it's pretty cool they got these signs here now. They didn't used to have the Land Bridge and Santos Trailhead. So, but I think we, uh, we merged with the bike trail for just a little ways and then the Florida Trail dives back up into the woods. I think you see it right up here. We're gonna get left right up into the woods. Just wanted to show you as we move along here. I was correct, so the bike, bike trail's continuing on this way. Boy, they cut in the fire break pretty close to the path, huh? I don't like that. But here's the Florida Trail turning left off of the uh, the bike path there, and we're gonna get back into the woods. So it'll be quite beautiful. So I forgot to show you at this point in the trail, there's a green trail you can do for mountain biking, but there's a bench to sit on. That's always nice to have, but let's get back on the Florida Trail here. So this is a different look. I thought I'd get this. Boy, the squirrels there. Well, I guess it's that time of the year. They're out scurrying around. So you will get to see a lot of squirrels on the trail you know, as you hike. Uh, always like it when they make these turns, you know, back and forth. So you're not just hiking straight through the woods. Wanted to get the sunlight on the video. Check it out. The sun's peering down. But look at that oak tree. Man, when I see them look like that, I remember the, the TV series Sleepy Hollow when the Headless Horseman would come out of the tree. <laughs> that looks like the tree that the Headless Horseman came out of. Wanted to give you another quick story as we hike along here. Uh, there's a woman that never comes on. I do hikes for the uh, Nature Explorers Club. I'm called a trailblazer. I guess that's a good a name as any. any uh, she's very sensitive to the sun, sunlight. I, I don't know if she had skin cancer or maybe did too much bathing in the sun when she was young. But wouldn't this be a great trail for her to come? Because she likes hiking. You know, she just doesn't can't come on some of my hikes because too much sunlight. Boy, I hear you wouldn't you wouldn't have to worry about it all on this trail. It just stays well well uh, well shaded, very much. So there's another oak tree right there. But I just wanted to tell that quick story and get that view of the sun peering over top of the tree. I thought it was pretty cool. Well, I know I'm taking too much video. But this is this is cool. So you're peering off into the forest over here, and then look, we're coming up on that oak tree. Look at that monster. And then of course, right along the trail, we got more of them. So boy, if you're into oaks, I didn't remember. You know, sometimes you just hike and you're just moving along. But look at this, and you're kind of peering off into the forest this way. Just fantastic. But uh, yeah, this would be a great trail to get to look at these magnificent oak trees. Look at the trunk on that thing. I bet that thing's 300 years old. Holy moly, thank God we preserved something here. All right, check that out. Cool view off into the, the young pine trees there. But then the trail continues on this direction and you got the fire break over to the right. But I, I need to start putting timestamps. I would say we're about 45 minutes, maybe an hour into the hike. I'm doing about two, three, maybe 2.5, three miles an hour. So we're good, good. I'd say we're a good uh, two, 2.5 to three miles into the hike. So this is what it's looking like. This is a prime example of what I was talking about with the bike path. Here you got a turn coming in, turn back, turn, turn back, turn back, turn back, turn back. So that's what makes mountain biking fun. Now you look at the Florida Trail, just kind of a straight shot, although you know this winds around a little bit. But man, when you're going about 10, 15 miles an hour, making those turns, it, I mean, it's kind of dangerous, but it's fun as hell, especially when you're young. I wish I was young again. Thought I'd show you this. So we've come right up to the Santos Paved uh, Bike Trail. 
So if you didn't want to hike back just to, you know on the same trail that you hiked out on, although this will get you to 25th Avenue and you would just make a left and hike down the road a ways to get to the vortex. It's a bit of a hike down the road, but it, it would be a, a different, you know, different hike. You'd hike back on the asphalt here. I've done that many times. I know exactly where I'm at. Uh, or you could park right on the bike trail, hike up the bike trail and pick up the Florida trail right here. So just giving you some options. Uh, Cause you know, if you're like me, I, I do the Florida trail in sections. And uh, sometimes, you know, you got to know how to get to the next section as you're moving along. Now, if, you know, on a hot day, I probably would have turned around by now. But, man, it's it's absolutely perfect. I bet it's about 70 degrees, somewhere around in there. And, uh, you know, I mean, just not even hardly sweating, you know, just hiking along. I didn't even bring water today. There's no reason to bring any. Just uh, just enjoying the this amazing amazing day you can't work on the house every damn day you know got to get out and have some fun just in case you thought i was lying about the squirrels i just passed two there's one right there there goes a bird so there you go check him out little guy oh, man are they nimble lord anyway well, two other things i wanted to talk about when hiking this time of the year you know one, couple of the complaints that I get as a trailblazer when I bring people out on these hikes is well one time we got a bunch of ticks and that was I can't remember when we did that I want to say it was October and um, the hikers didn't like that <laughs> having ticks all over them you know so with a, this time of the year especially as wide as this trail is cut you don't have to worry about ticks so that's uh that's the one good thing uh but uh what was the, there was a second thing I can't remember that people were worried about. Oh, yeah, I guess just the ticks. All right, so this is what the trail's looking like. Uh, we're a good hour, or past an hour into the hike, uh, continuing on along. At some point, I do have to turn around. I'm getting a little tired. It's, you always go too far on a day like today. You know, you, you're out, you're enjoying it, and you're going like, oh, I'll be fine, I'll be fine. I guarantee to you when I get back to the car. <laughs> I, I have a hard time getting into the car. I mean, it's like, oh my God, I did too much. I did too much. Hey, we're coming up on a building. Let's check it out. Yeah, that's beautiful. So two ladies sitting there. If you wanted to come out and read a book, that'd be a great place to just camp out and read a book. So right now we're hiking back to the bike trail. So they probably were out hiking the, bike, the paved bike trail and then just went up to there. But uh, I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, just come here on the next hike, bring a book and just sit there and for a few hours and read and then hike back. That'd be like a perfect day, wouldn't it? So, we'll, But we'll see. We'll get, get some more of the trail and we'll get across the bike path. At least I think I'm coming up on the bike path. So I was correct. You know, this would be a good place to turn around or... Uh, I've definitely camped on that picnic table right there. In fact, the last time I biked the uh, paved trail, uh, me, me and uh, my buddy, we stopped right there. And uh, But, you know, one thing you can always do is come out, get some high, uh, biking in, and then, uh, you know, like you could hole up right here. Of course, you don't want somebody to steal your bike, and I've done this before. So, I, you know, I just basically hiked my bike down here into the woods far enough. Like I said, I haven't seen, other than those two ladies sitting at that bench back there, or in some mountain bikers, not a single person hiking the trail. And you can you can hide a bike in here. Plus, I mean, I I don't see where how anybody would steal it. Most people are already on a bike, so they can't ride two bikes at the same time. And if you have a hiker, I don't think they're going to be interested in stealing your bike. But you you never know at this day and age. But anyway, so this is uh this is what the the trail does. It, goes onto this side and we're just going to go about another 15 minutes and then I got to turn around I'm getting tired and uh, it's gonna be a long hike back but look at that view and off into the see how that you know it's amazing though you know I know there's deer back here I very rarely see deer on this path lots of birds lots of squirrels uh, lizards every now and then turtles I uh, never seen a snake although that doesn't mean anything last time I hiked Marshall Swamp <laughs> I'd never seen a snake there either, but I almost got bit by one. So, you know, it was, uh, I got lucky. Somebody, I was hiking with somebody and they said, look out for the snake. 
<laughs> All right, uh, that's uh, that, that's another reason to hike this trail. I don't think you have to worry about bears and snakes and you know all the things that might uh, harm you in some fashion. Oh, the other thing was I remembered is the bugs. Okay, that's another complaint that I've gotten on some of my hikes. Well, this time of the year, I mean, there's not a single mosquito out. You know, not a not a not the flies. Those black those damn horse flies that fly around here in Florida or black flies. I don't know if they're horse. I guess they're not really horse flies. Uh, you get that when you're hiking, you know, later in the season or even earlier in the season, especially in the summertime. So just a perfect perfect time to be out hiking in the year when not be annoyed by anything. All right, we're coming to the end of the hike for me. It's almost four o'clock. And uh, that's going to be a long hike back. But I didn't realize, so it looks like the Florida Trail, well, it's coming up to the uh, the bike path again right here. So if you didn't want to make that first turnaround when the trail crossed the bike path, you could always do what I did, hike this section of the trail, and then come back to the bike path right here. So well, maybe it's not going to go up to the bike path. It looks like it's going to turn left. Hold on, let's check this out. So, yeah, yeah, it's coming up to the bike path right here. So, so this would be a good spot for me to turn around. Now we're going to get, I'll get a clip when I get to the, the, the first road, and I'll show you what that looks like. And then the second road should be 25th Avenue, and then we'll hike on down that. But you can see it's just going to dive back into the forest, but I'm getting tired. So that's it for the Florida House Trail hike. Today, you can see how you can break it up, do do something different. So uh, I'm making a right on the bike path here, and uh, we'll talk to you when I get to the first road. I'll show you that, and then we'll show you the. Uh, well, here's a here's another thing. There's a bench right up here. Uh, yeah, I'm familiar with that. So that'd be a good place to come and sit and read a book too. But I I like that other one better because it's kind of back in the forest. Alrighty, see you soon. So I wanted to get you, well they do need to repaint this, but I think that says four miles. So we are four miles from the Santos and just just a ways down there was where I made the turn off of the uh, Florida Trail. And to give you the distance, uh, 25th Avenue is 1.5, about 1.6 miles from Santos. So you figure, uh, well, you do the math. <laughs> I'll, I'll do it in my head and get another clip here in just a minute. I, I'm just tired. I, when you're old, you can't do numbers, huh? Okay, 2.4 miles. <laughs> I, feel, I feel so stupid. And then, of course, you got about another half a mile to get back to the uh, the vortex. So you're looking at, uh, I'd say about a six mile, six to 6.5 mile hike here. Uh, I wouldn't want to do it on a hot day, but uh, you could. If you're in shape, but if you're a fat old man with a broken neck, you might not want to try it on a bad weather day. So here's a look at that picnic table. So if you wanted, you know, you could just get back on the Florida Trail down here and go on back to the Vortex. Uh, you know, if you did the section on this side over here, just wanted to point that out on the way back. Plus that picnic table would be a nice place to have a picnic you know, about, boy, you're halfway through the hike, more or less. A little, little more than halfway, but still. So I pointed this out on the way out, and I'll point it out on the way back. See, this is another place you could pick up the Florida Trail. Now, we are about 0.75 miles down the paved bike path, and, uh, and that would shorten things up probably for you, because that'll take you right back to the vortex and I imagine you could probably take that uh, bike trail, although you're not supposed to walk the bike trails, but I do it anyway. No no bikers ever said anything to me. Uh, you know, you want to do it on an off day, not when they're having a big event or something like that. Uh, but uh, So that would be another option. But I wanted to show you, and I wanted to get a feel for how far I have to hike down 25. So I'm going to continue going this way, and uh, we'll we'll get that on the video when we get there. So if you do do what I'm doing... You know, there's a picnic table here now. In the summertime, that is one buggy mosquito location. <laughs> but but uh, that'd be another place. It's an option. You, about 1.5 miles into the hike back. I just saw the distance marker, so that's uh, 1.25 miles 
from the uh, four mile marker where we uh, made the turn onto the uh, paved path. I just want to give exact numbers when I can. Don't get that very often. All right, I've come to the first road. And you know, one of the things I wish they would do with the bike trail is put up a sign like you have and say what road this is. This could be 25th Avenue. I don't think it is. So, and we're about uh, two, the two mile marker from Santos is right over top of that hill. So I'm gonna hike over to the second road, which I believe is 25th Avenue. We'll find out. And uh, if worse comes to worse, I would just have to come left on that road down there if that's not 25th Avenue and then come and go down that way. So let's uh, let's check it out. I just, and most people who are in the area have ridden the bike path. Uh, so, but uh, if you haven't been here before, I just wanted to make sure you, you know where you are. You're gonna come to the first road. You're going to come to the two mile marker right up here. This is a short section, maybe about 0.4 miles or so from what, that road to this road. And then uh, hopefully that'll be 25th Avenue. We'll make a left. So about 1.75 miles from Santos is this picnic table. Now, the nice thing about that picnic table is it's not too buggy, even in the summertime. And many a time, my dog, when I come in here, he wants to go right there and I water him right there. All right, so I've come to the second road, which I think is 25th Avenue, I'm not sure. And uh, you can see it's kind of busy, so you wouldn't want to do this unless it was getting dark. That's the only time I would recommend. I would just get you back on the Florida Trail, you know, and just uh, head on back to the Vortex that way. But I wanted to uh, make sure, you know, because I want you to have no all options for this hike. And uh, this is going to be kind of, kind of hairy with all these cars uh, going by, but well, I'm sure we'll be all right. All right, I was completely wrong. <laughs> so, this, uh, this, that was Southeast 95th Street, but actually that is the way you want to go. So you make a left on Southeast 95th Street and intuitively you see how 25 becomes a much better, this is 25th Avenue there, becomes a very nice paved road. So the only reason I know that the vortex is down here because I know that this section of the road sucks. <laughs> so, so I know it's to the right. So you come down 95th uh, there, turn right on 25th Avenue, and soon we'll, I'm pretty sure I can see the uh, entrance to the vortex a ways down the road there. We'll get there soon. Because I know 25th Avenue crosses the bike path, that first turn was where you wanted to make your turn, not the second one. I mean, if you wanted to stay on the bike path a while longer and get to 95th and then come down and make a right on 25th, you could do that too, but you could see there's a lot less traffic here on the 25th. And, you know, so that first turn would have just put you right on 25th and br brought you straight on down here to the Vortex. But well, at least you got a bunch of different ways that you can go. <laughs> so I covered them all today, didn't I? All right, that's it for the video. Peace out, stay free, and I uh, hope you do this section of the Florida Trail someday. If you wish to follow me other places, I post on many topics. My main interest is geopolitics. To follow me for geopolitics, I am that cybersecurity guy on YouTube. Under the playlist, Watching the World Burn. On Rumble, my channel is simply The Burn. I also post all my videos on X. That handle is That Cybersec Guy. That Cyber SEC Guy. I'm also on Getter and True Social. On Getter, it's the same as X. That cybersec guy, and on Truth Social, it is that cybersecurity guy. I also do minimal postings on Telegram at The World Burning. The World Burning on Telegram. I'm limited to two gigabytes there, so I don't post often unless it's a short video. I also do videos on outdoor activity because I'm into of hiking mainly. But it's Outdoors with Kirk on Rumble. That is my main channel for outdoor activity. But I also have a playlist on YouTube called Hiking, Biking, and Camping in the United States. Lastly, I do reviews and tutorials and commentary on various products. On Rumble, it is just simply that cybersecurity guy. That's my catch-all for any video that doesn't fit in geopolitics or outdoors. On YouTube, it is reviews, tutorials, and commentary on products. Hope you can follow me other places. Peace out. Stay free.